300 kilograms. I built this computerized wood strength testing machine and some fellow YouTubers graciously sent me some uh, different species to test. These ones are from Peter Collins and these ones are from John at uh, Farmcraft 101 and I also have a few samples of wood of my own to cut up. Now I got my work cut out for myself. I just have to plane them to make sure they're all exactly the same size. Next I measured the length of all of my pieces and then weighing every one of them. Working out the density for all these and sorting them, the heaviest were the dogwood, the ironwood and the osag orange. Hickory was fourth. So this takes a picture of every sample at the start so if I get mixed up I can always figure out what it was. And it slowly cranked up the force on the threaded rod with a stepper motor back here. And as it does this, uh, we've got a graph of the force as it's increasing, current force, and this little line here actually shows the rate of change of force. So you can see now the force isn't increasing very much anymore, that's because the wood is starting to yield. But this beech seems to yield quite a bit before it snaps. And it always takes a picture in the broken state. And now, this piece should be long enough, I can test it again in a different orientation. So the previous crack is right here, that doesn't get stressed again, so I can test this again. And running all these tests took quite a bit of time, but it was fairly relaxing and I could listen to podcasts. This is a much better setup than my old one where I had to read the bathroom scale as the test ran. That almost exceeded the strength of my tester. And on with the testing. Uh, most samples fail fairly gradually given some warnings. Failures like this are relatively rare. And once my machine detects a 10% decrease in force, it won't push any further because at that point, it's not going to get any stronger. I have it set up now so that once it hits over 210, the stepper motor slows down a lot. And that cuts down on skips quite a bit. So I've bumped up the limit past 250 kilograms and hopefully that'll bust this piece of ironwood that I couldn't bust before. 260. 268 now. 270. Oh, there it's starting to go. That's a successful break. It just hasn't fully busted yet. And that's the sound of the motor skipping. And here's the OSAC orange again. Presently 225 kilograms. Quarter ton now. 280. 290. And the motor's starting to skip. Oh, I think I need to help it a little bit. Three hundred kilograms. Here's all my samples busted, and with the increased load limit to three hundred kilograms, I was able to bust these heavy woods as well. I imported the results into a spreadsheet and sorted by ultimate failure strength in my tests. The first was the Osag orange, then hickory, ironwood, hard maple, dogwood, white ash. Another hickory sample, another white ash sample. And unsurprisingly, those were also the heaviest pieces of wood. And plotting wood density on the bottom versus the ultimate strength, you can see these uh, pretty much follow a line in terms of how well they go. Some of them are suboptimal in that they were heavier but not all that strong. 
Then I was wondering about strength to weight ratio. So here I've got strength divided by weight on the y-axis and weight on the bottom. And surprisingly, some of the best strength to weight ratios were also the very heaviest woods. So now sorting by strength to weight ratio, I have top is Osak orange, hickory, hard maple, and then butternut. That was quite surprising. Uh, it did well on that front because it's a very light wood, but it was not too bad in terms of breaking force. Next, sorting how much displacement I got at the 50 kilogram load. And the uh, least displacement was the hard maple followed by hickory followed by ironwood and ash. A birch one was also did quite well on that. An interesting one here is the dogwood, which was one of the stronger woods. has actually got more displacement than the other ones. So the dogwood sample I had might make a fairly good spring or a bow because it flexed quite a lot and it had a lot of force so it can store a lot more energy. So I came up with a score for bow suitability, which is the maximum force times the displacement at maximum force before it broke, divided by density, because you want it to be light. And the top score for that one was this one, which is the dogwood, followed by the Osag orange, hickory, ironwood, and a birch sample, although that's a bit surprising. I think that one is just, it yielded quite a bit before it failed, so I don't think I should count that one. Next one on the list is Elm, and if instead of failure displacement I use the 100 kilogram force displacement, Elm is actually top. So that might actually be a fairly good bow wood too, but the uh, dogwood is the clear winner for making a bow, at least by this criteria. And googling around, people do indeed make bows out of dogwood. Although well, looking at how the samples broke, the uh, dogwood, the way it broke, it kind of broke with a bang, and so did the Osag orange, whereas the uh, hickory and the ironwood started to splinter off a bit, which is to say they gave a bit of warning before they went, which is much more graceful for uh, making a bow. You don't really want it to just go bang and snap in half like the uh, dogwood or the Osag orange would. So uh, that makes the case for making a bow out of hickory. And I'm not planning on making any bows or anything of that sort, it's just out of curiosity. Next, uh, the dark woods all seem to kind of fail with a bang in that they failed all at once without splintering. Which is to say they are perhaps a bit more brittle. And to me that says those woods are probably unsuitable for something where strength really matters, like a chair. Because you don't want that to just snap in half, it's much better to have something that fails a little bit more gracefully like that, which is to say if you bang it really hard, it might crack a little bit, as opposed to just snap in half. So if you want to build chairs that last, don't use dark woods because they shatter too easily. In fact, what makes a good bow wood would probably also make a good chair wood in that it has a lot of ability to resist breaking when you knock it over and stuff like that. Very important if you have kids. I'm now testing all these broken bits for hardness by pushing a number three. I think that's a black colored Robertson screwdriver bit. So it's just pushing it five millimeters into the wood and measuring how much force that took. I'm not compensating for a flex in the machine, but the whole thing is a relative measure anyways. The machine isn't strong enough to do a proper Janka hardness test. So now I have over a hundred divots pushed into all my test pieces. Uh, this sort of test is very important if you're building a table. You want it to take as much force as possible to push a divot into it so it's less easily dinged up. I added the indentation force here and the top is the dogwood, osak orange, ironwood followed by hard maple, although I've got another hard maple that's uh, quite a ways down here. So not always great. And then I've got a cherry up here, another cherry down here, and another one here. So cherry can be good. Then ash and hickory. So ash and hickory seems to be uh, pretty safe choices. The yellow birch did quite well. The beech did well. Overall, just maple does well. Um, and the uh, dark woods, uh, walnut did rather poorly. It's almost, almost down there with the soft woods. And at the very bottom, is cedar and uh, probably a white pine, another cedar, some spruce, basswood. Those are really not suitable for tables. Thinking further about suitability for a bow, I started to look at the yield curves. For the dogwood, the rate of increase started to slow down right around 91, 93 kilograms, which is to say we're starting to get into plastic deformation as in damaging the wood. 
Whereas for the OSAG orange, that didn't really start to happen until we were about 143 kilograms, which suggests this may store a lot more energy, whereas this one is just bending. Then the uh, hickory was 121 kilograms, where it started to drop, although slowly, and the ironwood 131 kilograms. So maybe OSAG orange makes the best bow, but it's also a matter of repeated cycles and all that. There's a whole lot more experiments I could do, but I'm not a bow maker. And there's so much more to it that I can cover in a video, so for a change I wrote an article to go with this video again. Also to have a place to download that spreadsheet in case you want to play with it yourself.